Hello and welcome to another tutorial from OpenShading.com. My name is Thomas Dinges and today I will show you how you can convert a shader from another shader language to OSL. The reason I'm showing you this is that uh, yeah, OSL is quite a new technology, at least for the open market, for the public available render engines. So um, there are not as many example shaders out there as you might find for languages like yeah, GLSL or the RenderMan shading language. So today we want to port a shader which has been written in GLSL, the OpenGL shading language, to OSL. And you will see that this is really not difficult and you only have to um, be aware of some differences in the syntax. So I have found a really nice website online which you can find here. That's a GLSL sandbox where people post uh, interesting examples and shaders they're uh, playing with. So let's take this basic sign pattern for example. It's quite nice and uh, it's easy and uh, you can animate that. So let's take the code and see how this can be ported. I paste the code to the Blender text editor and I maximize the screen with uh, control and up. And uh, yeah, let's make it a bit uh, bigger so you can see it. First of all, we don't need all these uh, declarations here. They are specific to um, GLSL. Although there's one variable time which is needed later on. So we will have to re-add that variable in our OSL shader. Okay, let's first include the std OSL as usual, the header file, and let's generate a new shader and call it sign pattern. Now, as I just said, uh, we need the value to animate the pattern. Let's call it time and give it a default of 1.0. Then we need a point, so basically the coordinates, um, so the shader knows about the coordinates and can, can display properly on the geometry. Let's call it uh, Po, for example, and um, is the global P. And then we need an output output color cal equals and let's give it a default of 0 0.8. Okay, so we have our basic shader header here. And then we can start with the actual algorithm. I won't go into details here about this algorithm and stuff, I just want to show you how easily this shader can be ported and then that you only have to be aware of some uh, differences in the syntax of the two languages. So we have our declaration here, then let's remove the void main function here. And we can just use those brackets for our shader code, so this is fine. And first of all, we need this point. Um, we already declared it here, so we can remove the vector here. Maybe I should mention, this is a 2D uh, data type in GLSL, a VEC2. It has two components. There is no real equivalent in OSL. So we could either use an array with uh, two components, or we can just use a data type with three components, like the point or a vector and just leave out the third component. So we will just use the X and Y or the first two components and uh, this will work just as fine. Then something uh, we have to be aware of before changing the code here is that OSL does not allow an override of an input variable. So I can read the value of this input but I'm not allowed to change it. So if I want to declare or define a new um, value and assign that to this, it will give me an error. 
So we need a local variable and from from the par, from the data type point and let's call this pos for position and assign po to it. So now we have this local variable which you can play with and uh, change and it won't give us any error message. So first of all they subtract the first component of the point with uh, 0 0.5. So let's change this. We have pos, so instead of upos it's just pos. And then um, the difference between GLSL and OSL is that uh, rather than a dot and then the component we take square brackets like this. So it's like an array, you start with 0, then 1, then 2 and so on. We have the word uh, word color, which is a float data type, this is fine. And then we have the actual for loop, which is the um, pattern generation for this uh, shader. So it generates all the sign stripes and uh, um, the loop header is fine. And then, ah, okay, we have to change time because we have written it with an uppercase T. And uh, then we have to change the vectors again. So it's again pos and then zero. Here we need the second component. So it's pos one. And here we have pos zero again. Okay, this should be it, I think. And then we're done with the pattern generation here. So now we can just uh, take this and output it. So we have a vector 4 here which defines the color. Uh, we already defined a color output here. So we can just remove that and uh, assign the color to our output variable. So cal equals color, then we have R G B and this is the alpha value in GLSL. We don't need that here. We can just leave that out. And also we don't need any extra declaration. We already have our output here. So let me quickly read through the code again. This looks okay. And it should work. So I press Shift A and add a script node again. And the shader already compiled, so I didn't make any mistakes, at least none in the syntax. Let's see if this renders. So, fingers crossed, and yeah, it renders. This is nice. So you now see the pattern here. And if I change the time value, you see that this is animating. Okay, so you see this uh, porting was quite straightforward. You just have to be aware of some syntax differences and then it's quite easy. Uh, we can do one more thing. For example, let's change the amount of stripes, which is hard-coded in the script. Uh, it says 10. So let's make a default, or let's make a variable. Let's call it stripes. And then let's add a yeah, we can take an integer here, because it's uh, easier for the user interface then. So let's uh, have integer stripes and assign 10 to it and recompile the shader. And now we have this uh, amount of stripes here and if we change that, you see we get less stripes. Now we only have one. Animate that again. So now we have a really easy um, and simple sign and then we can increase the amount again and we have more. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this and um, I encourage you to try yourself. You can just go 
to this website here and take one of the examples probably not one of the most complex ones for the beginning but uh, let's just take one of those easy ones and uh, see what you can come up with thanks for watching and see you next time again with another tutorial for openshading.com thanks and bye